Good morning, everyone. As Gabriela already introduced, like, I will be presenting very much the, the draft of like, um, the basis of what's in that project. Like, um, very briefly, go through the most uh, the main achievements. But uh, as you know, this is a long session, and some of the aspects will be dealt with in more detail by my colleagues. I'll start by introducing myself. Uh, my name is Daniel Petran Kuno. I work uh, as a epidemiologist at the Federal Agriculture Organization for the last uh, nine years. Um, and I'm also the LinkTats coordination. coordinator. LinkTats uh, stands for Linking Epidemiology and Laboratory Research on Transplantary Animal Disease and Zoonosis in China and the EU. And really, the project is, is pretty much that. So, like, it's not a traditional project, uh, uh, research project as others in the program. program. It's basically aiming purely at uh, coordination. So there is not uh, research being conducted. There is no. Uh, it's, it's it's purely getting partners in the EU, partners in China, uh, working together in the field of animal health. Uh, this is the agenda. Uh, you have it from the, the welcome back. So we are starting a bit uh, late, and I mean, like my presentation will be a bit short. Uh, then we have uh, a presentation on the online research funding and linked as online cooperation opportunities by Maria Kinya from SPI. Then we go into the identifying research collaboration opportunities in animal health for Europe and China by Julian from CIA. Uh, and then we have a session in the afternoon. First, uh, the uh, Official from the European Commission, that's one and Mr. Wright, will uh, will present like on the new uh, EU-China cooperation opportunities and the horizon 2020. We'll have uh, a talk by uh, European Media uh, by Gabriela on future opportunities in EU-China cooperation in animal health and research. And then this was not in the original product, it's a last uh, minute edition. We'll have a short presentation by Sandra on the incidents on uh, the GARA, which is the Global African Soil Fever Research Alliance. Uh, and we'll presentation on this. And we finalized with a presentation by Anna Matthews from the Royal Veterinary College on applied research and uh, <coughs> teaching opportunities in the um, Russia. So uh, these are just some of the basic uh, characteristics of the project. As Gabriela already mentioned, this is uh, an FP7 project. It's, uh, it's a three-year long project, started in November 2013, and uh, it's uh, due to finish in one month time. So today uh, is the final dissemination event in the EU. There will be another similar one in a couple of weeks in, uh, in China, in Kunming. And uh, the whole idea is to present uh, all the achievement that, uh, of the project, the main challenges, the opportunities, and like uh, how um, what has been done under Mintas can uh, help future collaboration and future researchers that want to work between EU and China. Uh, the consortium is composed by uh, 11 partners. It's a quite balanced relationship um, composition with five partners from China and five from Europe, plus the FAO as an international partner. Here we have uh, the list of uh, the 11 partners. So we have the Food and Agriculture Organization in the coordination role. And then we have the, um, both the research institutions and universities and also the Swedish uh, State Veterinary Agency, Shanghai uh, Research Veterinary Institute, Harbin Veterinary Research Institute, China Animal Health and Epidemiology Center, Beijing Chinese Center for Disease Control and Prevention, Sociedad Portuguesa de Sandino Massa, and the Wazong Agricultural University. Um, the strength of these partners is uh, it's uh, quite uh, diverse. So while some of them are uh, very strong on laboratory, some others uh, are more strong in, uh, in epidemiology. And uh, that's one of the main objectives of LinkTats, that this collaboration that takes place uh, between EU and China happens both in lab and epi, but also making sure that one I mean, both aspects are always combined and are taken into account. Uh, most of you will be familiar with the um, structure of uh, this type of European projects. So I will go briefly through this, but 
hopefully, like uh, quite easy, will help you a bit uh, to understand how the project was structured. First, we have the work package uh, one, which is a management and coordination, which is pretty much to ensure communication, coordination between partners, like uh, communications with the European Commission, with the Veterinary Bureau in China, with, uh, with uh, other policy makers, etc. Then we have a uh, work package two, which is an analysis of animal health and food security. This was the first uh, technical work package to get activated, let's say, and it was uh, basically aiming to uh, get the foundations of the ma major gaps and major priorities of research in both EU and China. And the rest of the project really built up on the results of this work package. So the topics were identified, and then um, uh, after that, the rest of the activities were, were uh, developed. Then we have two other technical packages, one uh, focusing on epidemiology, another one on, uh, on um, laboratory studies both very closely coordinated. Another um, it's a technical package is on uh, supporting policy dialogue. And then we have the other um, also quite common um, work packages in this type of project. One is the platform development, which is basically like to develop a website, both for dissemination purposes, but also to help as a repository of documents and to help in the, in the sharing of documents within the consortium. So there's like an internal website for that. And then we have another one, we're package seven, for exchanges and capacity building. So basically we sponsored uh, scientists to spend some time visiting another other of the consortium and uh, learn more about uh, what the other uh, research partner does, and so be able to build up on that and generate projects and, and collaboration from there. And finally, um, but probably one of the most important is on the dissemination and sustainability. Today's, um, meeting is, is actually part of this work package uh, and uh, I will have a slide on, on this on like the different activities we do on dissemination and this is just like a diagram that shows a bit how the different work packages are integrated with each other. Uh, Julien will uh, go into more detail about this but I wanted to just uh, go with you chronologically on how things were done. So first thing it was, as I said, on the work package to, to uh, do a literature review uh, and find out what are the research priorities at the moment, both in the EU and China. And then, of course, the results of this uh, were refined according to the expertise of the different partners and, uh, and like the, their interests. So like within this on the list, uh, we went into, into a smaller one. And there was also a, a gap analysis on uh, the problems or issues related to research, to funding, uh, to training, etc. Also to see how the two regions could uh, collaborate uh, in more um, cross-sectional cross issues. I guess. So the approach uh, we used for uh, LinkedIn, uh, basically if we want to achieve uh, a great deal of collaboration between EU and China, the first uh, thing we thought was needed is uh, to create uh, as many as many as possible uh, of uh, networking opportunities, so we did this uh, for organizing like uh, many workshops on different topics, where we brought not just the partners of LinkedIn but also external partners. Because LinkedIn, although it is uh, initially was aimed to create uh, networking, I mean to create common research between partners that were already in the consortium. Uh, LinkedIn is also welcoming like uh, external partners to come into the into the, into the consortium. So um, after these uh, links were already created, we uh, try to encourage and to provide uh, sustainable collaboration mechanisms such as uh, joint laboratories, but also like uh, joint project applications, and uh, which some of them are already successful and are running. Uh, and then uh, most importantly as well. Uh, to do a whole process of dissemination throughout the project to um, communicate on the achievements, on the on our objectives, and uh, to uh, disseminate reports, uh, technical reports that have been produced through the project, and also to attract additional parties, additional interest. And finally, um, we developed also tools uh, to facilitate the, to find partners. So there was. We developed databases on uh, finding funding opportunities and also databases of partners with the research interests that are available within the website. So um, 
there will be a presentation also by the monitor about that. And I just want to stress again that uh, for us it was very important to stress the link between epidemiology and China. This is something that uh, uh, the FA office in China is also like uh, working to achieve. It's seen as one of the major uh, gaps in China, like there is uh, very strong uh, laboratory work, but sometimes there is not a, a good connection with epidemiology and decision taking. Mm -hmm. So we, we try to put a lot of effort on this. This is a slide that summarizes uh, most uh, important achievements. So uh, starting with uh, networking. So starting with the networking opportunities. My next slide, I will detail like which were the workshops and webinars that were organized. Uh, I will also have a slide on the on the different trainings and uh, that took place. Uh, we uh, successfully twinned with uh, other uh, relevant projects within FP7, but also others. We identified priority areas for joint action, as I described before, and the work that is through. We, uh, we develop a platform that has been uh, successfully used and developed and that will stay after the end of the project. We have uh, uh, also like five short academic visits between partners of the project. And as a result, uh, there's been uh, uh, two joint labs created uh, between having one partner in China and one partner in the EU to conduct uh, research uh, together. As a result, there's been a uh, joint project that have been uh, developed, submitted, and uh, some of them have already been funded and are already running. Uh, we developed a resource funding database that is also will also stay available after the end of the project. And uh, within the broadcast, uh, we have uh, conducted a whole series of uh, dissemination activities that I will go into more detail in a later slide. So this is the list of work, technical workshops that have been organized. Of course, on top of this, we have our usual uh, progress meetings and dissemination meetings. So as you can see, uh, the range of uh, subjects is quite diverse uh, based on, uh, on what the partners were uh, requesting. And uh, this gave us the opportunity to bring external uh, experts uh, that could uh, participate in, in future collaborations with uh, link partners. So we have a meeting on uh, African Soil Fever Policy, also on uh, several meetings on vaccine and diagnostic technology, and like uh, here you can see also new diagnostic uh, technologies and novel vaccines. We have the one on epidemiology and ecology of avian influenza, also on uh, how to establish networks, on uh, veterinary, laboratory systems, veterinary laboratory systems and policy. We have an industry event to engage with the, with the industry on, uh, on, the, on the preliminary results that we are getting from that. And uh, here we have the, more on the side of the training and capacity building. We organize uh, seven webinars. Again, uh, these were based on own requests, on the interest of partners of, uh, and others. So, quite a, a wide uh, range of topics, as you can see. Usually, these were in a format of like one hour uh, webinar, followed by like uh, 15 minutes of questions. So, we had uh, many of these were organized together with, uh, with external partners that had the expertise on the topic. So, there was one. Uh, Disease investigation and microbial resistance. We had two on rabies, one more general on Asia, and then one conducted in Chinese specifically for the different uh, uh, regions within China. Uh, on animal health research agendas, on influenza, uh, avian influenza in 79, and also on animal disinformation systems. And uh, in terms of training, we have uh, conducted. Uh, Trainings in different formats, uh, free epidemiology training, and uh, our last presentation today will go into more detail on this. It's uh, very much linked with the FEPPD, the Field Epidemiology. Uh, uh, I cannot remember the What was the acronym? FEPPD, Field Epidemiology. Uh, the epidemiology training program. So, which is a program that has been running uh, for quite a while, and uh, I think that's uh, joined into it. Um, there was uh, workshops on uh, risk based surveillance, and just a couple of days ago, we started in collaboration with uh, EUFND uh, an online course on uh, food and emergency preparation course um, for 
from Chinese participants. Uh, and uh, very soon uh, there will be, uh, there's a number of, uh, of students eh, that have been um, sponsored to participate in uh, InterRISC uh, uh, Master. This is uh, to show a bit like the results of all the networking activities. So here uh, we are showing the geographical distribution both of partners in general, but then the blue ones are uh, external parties that have come into the project at one point or another and with whom uh, sometimes collaborations have started. So as you can see, uh, we have managed to, uh, to cover pretty much uh, all uh, major research partners in, in China and uh, like also in the EU and even some in, in other regions as you can see. And uh, this slide, uh, it's, uh, it's really the, it's just representing uh, this one the same as in the, in the one before, showing the collaborations that have uh, occurred thank, thanks to LinkedIn. So here we have the, the partners, and like uh, the thicker the line uh, represents like the, the stronger the collaboration. And then around here we have like uh, external uh, external partners that have come into the into these collaborations at some point as well. Uh, I would like to say a few words as well on the LinkedIn uh, platform, which will uh, outlive the project and uh, stay active for, for once, once uh, in October, once the LinkedIn is finished. So, I mentioned briefly before, it includes a database of 100 uh, funding programs uh, for international researchers that focus on EU China research collaboration. It also provides information about uh, EU. And China research and like uh, background documents and so on, and also uh, a repository of documents that we want to into policy and strategy. It uh, gives access to the focal point network, uh, which is basically a network of experts within the project but also outside the project that um, will aim to um, to answer queries and to aid the external partners in finding uh, funding, finding partners, and like uh, on specific questions they might have on, on, on the fields of expertise of these experts in, in the EU and China. So there are experts on EU and China on lab, and on, uh, on EPI, on policy, and, uh, and like there is a way to access it to the website. And then of course it has uh, access to all the uh, reports that have been produced to the projects or workshops. Uh, we also um, put there the recordings of webinars and uh, training materials of, uh, of what should happen going on, etc. And then uh, it was of course used to uh, disseminate uh, on events and, uh, and most uh, mainly like major achievements and uh, also to have uh, online discussion. Uh, dissemination. As I mentioned at the beginning, this is, uh, this is something that we put a lot of effort from the beginning because we believe that uh, for a project like this, that is basically to encourage collaboration, the most important thing is that, uh, that people are aware of it and how they can benefit from it. So we have uh, held uh, four dissemination events already, uh, counting this one, and uh, the last one will be happening in, uh, in China uh, in uh, a in month. We have the uh, four newsletters, and there will be a last newsletter coming up. They're all accessible uh, through the website if you're interested in, in reading more about like, uh, what Incas has been doing. Uh, there's been peer review articles that have come out from collaboration within the project. Of course, the, the website that I already mentioned. And then uh, we've been uh, very active in the social media, and you can see here that uh, we've used. Uh, we found particularly useful the, the use of LinkedIn uh, to, uh, to, to uh, communicate about our achievements and activities to the research community. And then the focal point network that I already mentioned. And uh, this is really uh, what I wanted to present today. Like This is the picture of uh, all, the, all the partners at the uh, kickoff meeting uh, three years ago. And on behalf of them and myself, I would like to thank you all. Thank you. Don't know if there is any. Any questions? Yeah, to Daniel. You showed us that beautiful network connections and this dimension. 
partners coming in at some point. To what extent can elaborate a little bit more on what these partners were doing and how they touch you, based touch on with you, and uh, what were they doing? Yes. Uh, so basically, the, the way these partners collaborated was in, in several different ways. Uh, it was mostly through a networking uh, opportunity. So it was external partners that were invited to cover specific aspects uh, at the request of LinkedIn's partners. So they would come to the scientific meetings and they would uh, give like keynote lectures. And then uh, uh, from there, like it gives the opportunity, of course, to uh, to work into into collaboration. So some of them uh, have. Um, have followed into, into, into deeper collaborations and projects. Uh, also through webinars. Um, several of the webinars have been given by, uh, or partially given at least, by uh, by some of these external partners. So we've had the WHO, we've had the, like, uh, the Rabies uh, Association, uh, I mean, the research community for like, in the topic of antimicrobial resistance as well, and the Rubens Institution. So, they're, they're uh, coming into different formats. So it's mainly you approach them? Uh, mostly yes, but there's been a, a couple of, of exceptions of, uh, of people that have uh, contacted because they wanted to collaborate uh, with, uh, with, with partners within, within China particularly. So you know, we had uh, someone coming from, uh, in, from a research institute in Cuba wanting to work on the and uh, there's been, uh, we've put in contact uh, Partners. I mean, we don't always know exactly how many of these have progressed into into a, into a stronger collaboration. We know about some of them, but not all. And that's something that we we uh, uh, try to do now in the last uh, uh, month of the project to recap and to really get a comprehensive list of like new activity. I mean, new collaboration have been created for instance. The slide I presented with uh, links. It's it's from a few months ago, and so we will need to. At the end of the project, to have a full, full picture. figure PCR uh, diagnosis uh, for uh, also done between uh, between Chinese partner and like uh, like uh, FDA. Uh, there is oh yeah on the encephalitis There's also a uh, um, on that. Is that published yet? Uh, yeah, those are the ones I don't think. I mean this. Uh, Many of these we expect them to come at a later stage because, of course, like in a three year, first you need to create the networking, then you need to start the work, and then to publish. So, it's, it's these are all things that are coming up in the Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. For dissemination purposes. Um, Actually, the network sounds like a really useful network as well. So, will that be a live network that could be used then for future projects or dissemination activities, or will that sort of network in a stop and then you will rely on the website? It will not be a live uh, website. I mean, like the information will be there to be disseminated. And still, it will be possible to access the focal point network for another. The network will stay alive, hopefully. So we are trying to establish all of the, the, the expertise rooms for the network as well, for the focal point network. Uh, there's one now very concrete opportunity with a new project to, to keep that alive and extend the network with new members, actually. And we're trying to also to shape a little bit the focus of the network because just sharing the information and be there as a, as a contact person to provide support might not be enough to, to keep the network alive. So now we are working on the more exact solutions So giving a very specific role to the, to the network members, which is beneficial for them to keep the, the activity. But that's going to be done in the next month, actually. So we have a few ideas, but I, I don't want to share because all of them have to be open. 